Hello, it's Philip Taylor speaking from Richmond Green Chambers in London. Today I'm looking at an important book in a, in a specialist area um, of law, and this is Thornton's Legislative Drafting. It's now in its sixth edition. It's been written and brought together by Professor Helen um, Zantaki. I hope I pronounced the name correctly. Uh, it comes to us from Bloomsbury Professional, and I think it's an important hardback book to try to understand how, in fact, legislative drafting takes place. Because uh, one of the biggest problems we have as lawyers is to try to understand what is in the mind of those drafting statutes um, and some of the stupid things that seem to crop up occasionally as a result of, frankly, bad drafting. It does happen. Uh, it's never going to change because of the nature of Parliament. But this book is quite helpful. Now, we've given it a title. A fundamental purchase for those involved in all aspects of legislative drafting. Now, they don't need to be told how to do it, really, because um, clearly they're very expert in this specialist area. But the book itself is important. Let's have a look at it. It's hardback. Bloomsbury are really excellent having taken this on. There's the side. Front. There's nothing on the back at all. Let me just show you the book. At the back of the book, we have um, an index and the index is by paragraph numbering. You can probably see that. It's quite a substantial index, in fact. If we go to the front, all references are to the marginal paragraph numbers, and you can see that. And it's actually about words. You can see quite a lot of words are, are actually mentioned in the index. If we go to the front of the book, we then get to the front page, the main front page itself. And it mentions um, the fifth edition was uh, has a forward by um, Garth Thornton. Now, as I say, the book has been around for a while. It was first published by Lexis Nexis in 1970. Of course, we're in 2022 now. So it's a long time ago, 52 years. There's the preface to the fifth edition. I've lifted a little bit, which will be in the review, um, because in fact it's quite a useful. Um, point that has been made by um, Garth Thornton uh, from New Zealand. That was actually written uh, some while ago. Um, and what we've got um, with the preface today is a statement from the new editor as to what she wants to do. And she talks, I think it's important to mention this, she says the study of legislation both at an academic and a professional level, has seen leaps of development. Most innovations in drafting come as a result of two factors. One, an understanding that drafting is frenetic. It's a liberal science that requires a combination of theoretical knowledge and practical experience. And two, a relevant, uh, a relevation, a revelation, a revelation, a revelation of the many concepts and tools that drafters and drafting can borrow from other disciplines, be it social sciences, behavioural sciences, advertising or linguistics. And as she says, drafting is phronetic. And she goes on to say, just so that you understand what that means, just like a judge uses their theoretical knowledge of the law and its principles to apply them in the specific circumstances of the case before them, a drafter uses their theoretical knowledge of legislative principles to apply them in the specific circumstances of the drafting dilemma. Now, without going on to any more uh, detail than that, you will see therefore that it's been looked at very carefully in the preface and Helen wrote the preface in May 2022. You've then got the content section and again, it's important because it's, it goes straight to words, which I think is very, very important because I, I like many people, have, have actually looked at words when we've been dealing with a case. And it is actually the interpretation of specific words that can have quite an effect on the outcome of a hearing. You've then obviously got things like syntax and punctuation, a whole range of other things running all the way through, as I say quite a lot of information there in the uh, the actual content section. It's easy to navigate this book. It's not a difficult book to navigate. There are in fact uh, 22 chapters in total um, and they do touch on subordinate legislation and EU matters. In other words, the, the area is just outside. Then you've got tables of cases and then not, not many of them. Tables of legislation, of course, as well. 
and then you've got after that um, we go str there in fact are p uh, tables of legislation from other countries which is quite useful then then we go straight into the chapter chapter one is legislation as a tool for regulation you've got the paragraph numbering at the sides there um, and running all the way through you can see how each um, chapter actually starts again on a new fresh page and and I quite like the idea that they have for instance with the interpretation acts they have an introduction which assists quite um, quite simply in setting setting these steps for instance on powers and duties the same thing where you've got an introduction so there's a nice structure all the way through introduction middle bit and so forth so what do we say well I've borrowed quite a lot of information from the the basic blurb if you like to go with the book um, it's not an area of law that I've given a great deal of thought to because I'm not actually a drafter of legislation but I certainly keep as a politician although I'm only a very low grade one I do like to see what the polit political boys are up to and girls for that matter as to where we are going with some of the acts of parliament because they really are in this day and age, really quite profound pieces of legislation. And there are some important ones coming up with the current parliament, which is due to run for a couple of years yet. But we shall see. <laughs> this is an excellent and enduring work, as we say. And it first appeared in 1970 from Lexis and Nexis. Now, the late Garth Thornton, who's uh, obviously got a, a, a mention at the beginning of the book, stated... Um, that his book, Thornton's Legislative Drafting, would continue to be of practical assistance to drafters in their demanding but exciting and useful branch of uh, the law. And that's exactly the position we're in. I think it's a very uh, useful um, piece of assistance to them. Now, we have a new editor, that's Professor Helen uh, Zantaki, and she's done, I think, a superb job with the new sixth edition that we've now got, because clearly the um, the late Garth Thornton was was moving the the book forward, and we've now got this new edition. And what we've got in it are a number of things that I think are really quite important. Practitioners who are involved in drafting or amending legislation in the Commonwealth or beyond uh, will need a guide like this to help them with both the traditional and the modern techniques of drafting good quality statutory law. Now, I have to say that I think a lot of people just take it for granted that it's just done. But looking at the way that it's created sometimes makes me very worried because of the, uh, the fact that you need professional people to draft uh, the relevant laws and then they're messed about by other people. And we all know who we're talking about there. However, having said that, I do believe at the end of the day, we have got ourselves into a position now where quite a large amount of legislation is extremely well constructed. Not all of it. Some of it really does lead to some problems, but we all know what they are. Now, as I say, the sixth edition is recognised as the leading professional title in this area of, of law and practice, and it's used to and referred by legal officers and drafters internationally. That's one of the reasons why there is a nice international element to the, the book. It's completely uh, refreshed and updated by Helen, and the new sixth edition includes full coverage of contemporary uh, drafting developments and advances that have taken place. And I'm glad that that's mentioned because there has been in the past some criticism. The title, of course, has been fully updated for 2022. And alongside it, there are detailed, learned and professional guidance and examples on best and bad practice, which I think will be of great, great help in the processes that are involved. Now, what we've got in this book in just in a general, very short review is the new sixth edition includes a new chapter on legislation as a tool for regulation. Uh, international agreements are covered. That's the drafting and implementation. That's uh, implementation. That's really why there's a nice um, international aspect to it. We've also got pre-legislative scrutiny, which again is very much the work of Parliament. Forget all the stuff you see with them 
politicians fighting each other on television. They get there's an awful lot of work that gets on and done, and you don't hear any of this nonsense because they're getting down to the nitty gritty of the job we send them to Westminster to do. You've then got how to scrutinise a draft, post legislative scrutiny again very important, and EU legislation itself. That's the, the drafting and the transposition. Can I just say on the post-legislative scrutiny, I think, again, that's really very important because one aspect that I've always thought Parliament could look at, and, and it, it does a very good job in my view, but I think scrutiny, the all-party parliamentary groups are extremely useful for, to scrutinise certain things that are happening. And uh, I'm, I'm an unashamed supporter of a relatively large House of Lords because I think we've got a great deal of of knowledgeable assets there and so therefore that that's an area which I tend to be heretical in many other people's eyes they think oh there should only be a few people but I think quite a large group is actually quite important because that gives you the elements of scrutiny which will give us better laws at the end of the day anyway the book itself I think is 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 very very useful for those involved in this intricate area of the drafting process. The date of publication is cited at the 21st of July 2022. Let's just have one last look at the book. There we go. Hardback. There's the spine. Nothing on the back. If I just open it up. Chapter 10. Again, formalities and arrangement. Introduction. You can see there you've got the paragraph numbering. You've got formatting. You've got clarity of presentation, very important. These are, it's not a question of telling people how to do things. It's just there as advice. And I do think it's really very important. For instance, tables of contents. It's all the very practical stuff, which I, I have to say, I think many of us, we actually take a lot of this for granted. But at, at the end of the day, um, there are lots of pieces of advice. For instance, in this case, recommended order of arrangement um, when looking at the design of an act itself. And I'll just tell you as a final point, one of the concerns I've had, as a, both as a, a law lecturer and as a practitioner, is that they get the names of the statutes wrong sometimes. So you have the name of a statute, the title of it, and it doesn't actually refer to what the title suggests it refers to. It's rather like the yes minister joke about freedom of information. We get rid of the, the difficulty at the beginning by calling it freedom of information. And of course, the civil service aim is completely the opposite. No freedom of information whatsoever. And that was the joke. <laughs> but you see the problem. Thank you very much to everybody involved in this and to Bloomsbury uh, taking this publication on from LexisNexis. Thank you to all. Bye-bye.